Now let's look at key quotes relating to the character of Shylock. Now Shylock in The Merchant of Venice is presented as essentially the villain. He is the Jewish villain and Shakespeare does play on a lot of the really negative anti-Semitic stereotypes that unfortunately have been used to depict Jews in a very unfair manner, okay? So some of these stereotypes Shakespeare does use when it comes to the character of Shylock. Now Shylock is presented as somebody that's really disliked across all of Venice because he practices what is called usury, U-S-U-R-Y, which is basically lending but at using very high and outrageous interest rates. In other words, when you give a certain amount of money, say 10 pounds, but then you charge interest per month on top of the £10 that you owe to give back, maybe an extra £5 each month, you still have to pay an interest, right? Which is outrageous, okay? So basically, Shylock is disliked by Antonio and all these other characters because he basically practices usury. In other words, he's seen as really greedy, almost immoral in his money lending practices. However, on the other hand, we can also see Shylock as a very victimized character. In other words, he is almost dehumanized, firstly, just because he's Jewish because maybe if he did the same thing but perhaps he was white Christian so maybe English or in this case obviously it's based in Venice so Italian white perhaps would his usury be seen instead of being greedy would it just be seen as a very savvy business way we question this of course however we can argue that Shylock is a very victimized character and he's really treated like an outsider so maybe it's his environment that makes him into a very greedy but also a very negative character because also Shylock doesn't sometimes help himself the way he treats his daughter almost as his property he controls her but also the way he's so hell-bent on seeking revenge from Antonio by trying essentially ultimately to kill him this also is something that essentially shows that he's someone that doesn't practice forgiveness now as you can see behind me essentially I've prepared the key quotations to remember as well as the word level analysis and the structural things to bear in mind for each quotations particularly if you're studying Shylock and writing about Shylock for either assessments or exams so let's have a look at the key quotations to remember for Shylock's character now the first quotation to bear in mind is when he is approached by Bassanio. So he's a money lender, Bassanio is looking for 3,000 ducats, and Bassanio basically tells him, look, uh, I'm kind of coming here, I'd like to lend, uh, to take a loan from you, and uh, you know, this is also based on Antonio's good name. So basically I'm gonna use as security Antonio's good name. And Shylock basically asks a really good question. He says, okay, so how can Antonio make sure that he's gonna be able to afford to pay me back this 3,000 ducats in three months? And Bassanio says, well, he's got all these ships, you know, um, at sea that are gonna make him all of this money so it's going to be fine but then Sherlock asks ships but about boards sailors about men in other words he's saying well ships you know um, and even at that time especially you know they were made of wood and so on like uh, and so forth so he's saying ships they can basically break at sea right sailors they can make mistakes they're just men he basically lists out the reasons why maybe Antonio banking on everything being totally fine actually what if what will happen to Antonio if there's a shipwreck and he foreshadows the news that Antonio does later get that all his ships have been wrecked at sea and he's become bankrupt okay now for this quotation the word level analysis you want to do firstly is the sibilance of s in ships and sailors also the repetition of the conjunction or connective but again here actually this is showing Sherlock as actually being a very clever businessman rather than Bassanio who thinks everything's going to be okay Antonio also thinks everything's going to be fine he asks clever questions that's probably why he makes money he's able to make a profit because he's able to kind of ask these clever questions the second quotation for Sherlock's character is when we learn why he hates Antonio so we learn that Antonio is really horrible to him but also he hates him because he's Christian so he states I hate him for he is a Christian now, of course here the alliteration of H and hate him and he shows the passionate intensity in Sherlock's anger against Antonio the third quotation to bear in mind with Sherlock is when he also adds to the reason why he has this hatred for Antonio even if he's going to lend uh, his friend money he hates him and he, it's because Antonio he hates our sacred nation I hear when he talks about sacred nation bear in mind that Shylock is Jewish and the sacred nation of the Jewish population is Israel even in the Bible Israelites were mentioned and so on now in this instance the word level analysis you want to do is the adjective sacred of course to describe the nation that Jew Jewish people uh, hail from 
the other quotation to bear in mind with Sherlock's character is when he states and he's explaining to Antonio actually what I'm practicing which you guys call usury in the bible you'll see a lot of my business practices there and actually he then says and thrift is a blessing if men steal it not when he says thrift here by the way making profit is a blessing so he's actually saying the money I'm making and all these all this money and profits I'm making it's a good thing it's even in the bible the bible accepts that this is a good thing to do now here the word level analysis you want you want to remember and actually this is a structural point this is caesura here uh, so thrift is a blessing comma if men steal it not so of course here actually Sherlock is making a very valid point if you're able to make profit honestly you're not stealing but also when you make the profit you don't steal it from yourself in other words you don't make all of this profit then you spend it all actually that's a blessing so he's making very valid uh, points however just because it's coming from him and he's Jewish all the characters dislike him so also we can see here actually people are mistreating Sherlock and they're treating him in a very unreasonable way because even when he says this and he cites bible passages Antonio dismisses it he says well you know a devil can also cite bible passages I'm not listening to what he has to say now the other quotation for Sherlock's character is when he's now so now here we can also see he doesn't always help himself he's also not very kind to his daughter there's a theme of fathers controlling their daughters like the way Portia's dead father controls her Shylock controls his daughter Jessica and ultimately Jessica has none of it and she runs away now his control of her is when he states Jessica colon lock up my doors and this is an imperative sentence bear in mind imperative sentence basically means a sentence that states a command or an order now here of course when he's telling Jessica to lock up my doors it's because he's about to go out he's about to go um, to meet Bassanio Antonio and so on and he just seems to be very negative always kind of having these walls up and also trying to trap his daughter in his home which doesn't really feel like a home for Jessica it feels almost like a prison the other quotation to bear in mind for Charlotte's character is when he realizes that Jessica hates him and she has not only run away from him she has stolen his diamonds his jewels and money and he can't believe it he says my own flesh and blood to rebel now this is what we call an exclamatory sentence in other words this exclamatory sentence he's really shocked he can't believe Jessica could betray him in that way also of course here uh, he's talking about Jessica as his flesh and blood in other words his daughter and this is a metaphor because Jessica can't actually be his own flesh and blood however we feel kind of a lot of sympathy for Sherlock he seems really alienated and isolated and the only one person who maybe was on his side of the camp Jessica she's also run away she's also completely um, discarded him to the side and also stolen from him the other key quotation to bear in mind from uh, Sherlock's character is when he describes how Antonio has treated him he says he hath disgraced me and of course the alliteration here of he and hath again shows his passionate anger and the intensity of his anger against Antonio's treatment the other quotation for Sherlock's character is when he's justifying why he hates Antonio but also we can now see and this is where we feel a lot of sympathy for him he says also this man and a lot of people in Venice hate me because I am a Jew full stop hath not a Jew eyes now he goes into this you know um, almost a monologue where he's basically stating out the reasons why people don't like him and it's simply down to the fact that he's a Jewish man and he's saying I bleed like everybody else I cry like everybody else I have eyes I have ears I have you know I have body parts just like any other human but yet you're treating me not like a human so of course when he asks this question it makes us question why people would mistreat other people based on their heritage so being Jewish but even for example the color of the skin we can see through this question that how stupid the treatment of Antonio and other people are to, uh, to Sherlock just based on his Jewish heritage now in this these two sets of uh, sentences which are quotations relating to how we feel sympathy for Sherlock and how society mistreats him just because he's a Jew what you want to focus on firstly is a simple sentence I am a Jew okay and of course this makes us realize just how stupid and how irrational society is mistreating Sherlock just simply because he's a Jew because that's not really saying anything also you want to focus on the rhetorical question hath not a Jew eyes because basically this rhetorical question is asking is a Jew not human beings like everybody else but you're treating us as subhuman and finally what you want to focus on is the repetition of the word Jew of course this is the focus on anti-semitism remember anti-semitism is when anybody has a hatred of Jewish people purely because they're Jewish okay and of course here we can see that Antonio has a lot of anti-semitic feelings towards Sherlock but also uh, the other characters do also have anti-semitic feelings towards Sherlock and they punish him purely because he's Jew but he was born a Jew who really can't control that okay the other quotation for Sherlock to remember is when he realizes that 
Antonio is bankrupt, he's actually very happy and he doesn't want anything. He doesn't want, even if his money was doubled, even if he could get double the ducats, he doesn't want that. He wants a pound of Antonio's flesh, he wants his revenge. And he states, I sworn to have the due and forfeit of my bond. Now here, you wanna look at the pronouns I and my. Of course here we can see that, as I mentioned, Charlotte doesn't always do things that seem favorable in his uh, perspective and on his side, because here we can see his use of pronouns. It's all about him, it's all about him seeking revenge. And of course we can see here is a very stubborn character. The other quotation is when he uh, asks, what judgment shall I dread? Doing no wrong. And this is when he's at court and he's speaking to Balthazar. And Balthazar is basically, uh, obviously it's Portia disguised as a man, but she's cross-examining him, you know, they're asking him all of these questions. And he says, I have nothing to hide. What judgment shall I dread, comma, doing no wrong? Now here he speaks in what is called iambic pentameter. Now bear in mind iambic pentameter is any line in a verse or a sentence which has 10 syllables, one stressed, one unstressed. And of course if you're not sure what iambic pentameter is, do make sure you check out the video where I go over iambic pentameter. However here in terms of word level analysis and sentence type, you want to focus on the fact that he's speaking in iambic pentameter. This is Sherlock speaking in iambic pentameter. And that's interesting because do bear in mind that Shakespeare actually tends to have upper class uh, characters speaking in the iambic pentameter and it's the more working class characters the people who maybe are working as servants that don't speak in iambic pentameter for example they speak in blank first so actually here of course we can also see that Shylock is an upper class character okay but here we can see that he's totally blameless he's not done anything and he says his heart is clear in court when he's being cross-examined and he's only just asking for Antonio's pound of flesh because that that was the term of the contract okay then the other quotation to bear in mind with uh, Shylock's character is when at the end, he realizes that he's not even gonna get the pound of Antonio's flesh. But then he says, okay, fine. Um, can I at least just have my original 3000 ducats back? Okay, so I learned that. Okay, it turns out that, you know, I can't have Antonio's pound of flesh, but can can I get the money that I lent? Okay, which is, which is a fair question. And then he asks basically, shall I not have barely my principal? And of course, here you wanna focus on the assonance of A and shall have belly and principal. Again here, Sherlock is asking for what is his and he's being denied that. He never gets that principal. Principal means the original money that anybody who you're um, loaning money from, that's the original sum that they give you. So he's just basically asking what is a very honest question? Can I at least have the money alone and he's never given that in fact he even loses more than that okay so also arguably we can say that that money was also stolen from him okay and again this shows us that Sherlock is very victimized in society finally the final quotation to bear in mind of Sherlock's character of course when he realizes not only has he got to give up half of his wealth he has to also become a Christian he'll never get back his 3,000 ducats he basically says I am not well okay and this is of course a declarative sentence bear in mind declarative sentence states a fact feeling a mood of course here he just can't believe he's lost everything everything has gone against him and all he did was just do business but yet it's these people these supposed Christians who are supposed to be the more morally superior people they've stolen from him they've basically taken his money and they've also punished him by telling him we're also going to take half of the wealth that you've worked hard for and oh you also have to change from being a Jewish person you have to renounce your heritage and become a Christian so of course we can see that Shylock's ending is not happy at all everybody else is fine at the end of the play but he loses the most so that's it when it comes to key quotations remember and uh, what you can consider when you're analyzing these key quotations for Shylock's character